high school dropout? I was 15 and a half when I walked out of my high school for the very last time, vowing never to return to that institution of boredom and social torture for a smart, fat girl like me. It was near the end of my freshman year. It was a tough time for me. I didn't have any friends to say goodbye to, so I just grabbed my things and I escaped. Besides, earlier that year, I had IQ tested and scored a 147, so I figured there really wasn't much more that that school could do for me. I had better things to do. Now, taking on a label like high school dropout or any other negative label can really break a person if you let it. I had already survived a childhood and an adolescence known as the fat kid and the social outcast. It had been a, a bit crushing, to say the least. Years of taking on other people's perceptions of me had made me wonder if I'd ever have the opportunity for anyone to get to know the real me, to see past the outside. By high school, I began to come into my own strength. And although I never became a social butterfly, I did begin to relabel myself as a person of worth. Now, as I walked out of that school, I did begin to wonder what I would do with a future without a high school diploma. And I definitely did have moments of panic, but once that wore off, I started to have this incredible feeling of freedom and power. And I decided, walking out of that school, that I would let that be a catalyst to change my label from high school dropout to entrepreneur. I always knew I'd be an entrepreneur. I come by it naturally. My grandfather was a very successful business owner. He owned a huge construction company here in Southern California. As a child, I'd often spend days there, sitting in his big chair while he was out in the yard with his men, my mother in the next room doing his books. It was fascinating to me. But more importantly, it was just the way things worked. You ran your business, and people worked for you. My mother was also a very successful business owner. In fact, I still run the business that she started in the 70s to this day. Entrepreneurship and mentoring are in my blood. The course of my own business life started at the age of 16 with my business services company. I was doing secretarial work for attorneys and I still have that business to this day. The technology has come a long, long way from the electric typewriters that we used back in the day. But I'm still doing what I did. I forgot to mention one thing. I really had no choice but to become an entrepreneur. The few times that I tried to work in corporate, I was a terrible worker. I was that annoying employee, you know the one, we all know one, who was always going to the boss and saying, have you tried doing it this way? This might work better. Well, after the last time that I was told, Shadow, if you think you can do it better, why don't you go do it yourself? I did. After I left my last corporate job, I decided to expand my business services company. I added some employees and I hired a manager finally to run the business so that I would be free to execute my next business plan. You see, I am the queen of the courage to imagine. You see, my business was supporting me by this time, but I was single. I was over 300 pounds, cute as can be, but I didn't feel I had anywhere to go where people could admire me. So of course, being who I am, I saw a business opportunity in that. In 1997, 
I founded the world's first nightclub for plus size women and the men who liked them. It was a place of size acceptance and parties and music and dancing and everything that every other nightclub offered, but it was focused on the big girls of the world. The club was hugely popular and successful and I received worldwide media attention and was on major talk shows. I owned and operated venues all over Southern California for more than 21 years. In fact, I sold my last club only five years ago. People of all sizes came to my nightclubs because they were fun and inclusive. And there was no pressure to be perfect like the Hollywood clubs. In fact, to this day, people are still talking about my clubs and they still ask me to reopen them. People thought I was crazy <laughs> opening a club for big girls and they were probably right. But I am not afraid to fail. That is part of being an entrepreneur. I definitely was not the first person to have the idea. Once the club was open, I heard from so many people. I wish I would have thought of this, or I should have done this first. The only difference between them and me was I was the first person with the boobs to execute it. People had gone and started events, but no one had gone all in thinking that the risk was too great, but Shadow Risk Gray is my name. You see, I'm an idea person. I get business ideas all the time and I write them all down, but of course they don't all come to fruition. I have to vet my ideas and research them and make sure all the pieces fit, but that final puzzle piece is always that leap, that courage to imagine the success that I can make. You may have been able to tell from my story, I'm a bit of a rebel. I do tend to go my own direction. When everyone's going to the right, I'm going to the left. I'm gonna start a trend and once everyone is following me, I'm off to do something else. It's not my nature to be like everyone else. Let me give you a couple examples. When I started my clubs in the 90s, the thought of a club for big girls was a bit scandalous and unheard of. And that made it more enticing to me. And over the years, society's view of curvy women changed and more clubs opened. So I closed my clubs while they were still popular. Yes, we were the first and still the best, but we were starting to become one of the big girl clubs and I wanted to go out on top. Another example is I've been a business coach for 20 years, but nowadays anyone can call themselves a business coach. So I don't refer to myself as one any longer. That title has lost its cachet and power. I don't want my clients wondering if I'm a wannabe coach. I'll probably come up with a new term for us legitimate coaches and coin it just for us. After my corporate stint and I built up my business services company and opened my first two nightclubs, my mother retired and I took over her litigation firm because obviously I didn't have enough to do yet. I was in my happy place. I was thriving as an entrepreneur, feeling challenged, successful, and powerful, and tired, and stressed out, <laughs> and over my head. But that's what I signed up for as an entrepreneur. And the day-to-day -day of it was the exciting part, the learning and discovery. After some years of this trajectory, I became restless again to expand and I decided to build up my practice a little bit more and I added business startup consulting to my business services company. And I became something of an expert in that field. Over the years, I've helped my clients start more than 400 businesses in close to 100 industries. I've been hired as a mentor a business coach, a speaker, 
and I've even taught web development and business and graphic design at the business college level. Considering I never went back to school or continued my formal education in any way, that's something of an accomplishment to me and something I'm very proud of. Earlier this year, my best friend and I started a certification and placement agency for visitation supervisors in the state of California. My best friend is a purple-haired social worker with 50 years of experience who is now a visitation supervisor. And she came to me and asked me to help market her services. But being who I am, I said, well, why should you do the visits? Why don't we certify and train other people to do the visits and we run the company? So now at the age of 70, she owns her first company, something she's always wanted. And I love making dreams come true. So we now help people start new careers and we reunite families all over the state. So current day, I get to start on my passion project. The accumulation of my four decades of business experience, both my own and that of my clients. And it's something I've never imagined. My alter ego, my business persona, with my sassy know-it-all attitude, mismanagement, is coming to life. The Mismanagement Show is a video podcast call-in business advice show offering answers to business management questions in a shoot-from-the-hip, straightforward manner with a little smart-ass humor thrown in, which you would expect from me. I'm nervous, excited, and thrilled about it, and I'm ready because I'm confident in the success and unafraid of the journey. When I walked out of that high school 40 years ago, I had no idea what the world had in store for me, but I knew I would take it on like I've taken on everything else in my life, ready to face it, and here I am at the end of the journey, running three successful businesses, ready to launch a fourth, ready to conquer the world, and knowing the best is yet to come. Not bad for a high school dropout. <laughs>